Welcome to Books and Sound. I'm your host, Don Beavers, and this episode contains a digitally remastered theatrical presentation of one of the great works of literature. Please remember to subscribe so that you can enjoy new episodes as they are released. This podcast is provided free and offered without commercial interruption. If you enjoy the episode, please leave us a positive review so that we can grow the podcast. Enjoy. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Richard Conte in Stuart Lake's story of Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal, on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we dramatize a fine piece of work by an American newspaper man, Mr. Stuart Lake. A good many years ago, Mr. Lake became interested in the life of Wyatt Earp, a famous frontier pioneer whose name is imperishably associated with Tombstone, Arizona. Not only had some of Mr. Lake's ancestors pioneered in the West and known of Earp's great achievements in the service of law and order, but at a later date, Mr. Lake chanced to come into personal contact with Wyatt Earp when the latter was an old man living in Los Angeles. The result of this was a book called Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal, a biography of the great frontiersman, which is indeed an action story with a moral, and it is this which we are happy to present tonight. We are also privileged to have with us in the starting role, Richard Conte. In the year 1880, the western frontiers of the United States were being overrun by rustlers, gamblers, and murderers, and the value of a life became less than the bullet that killed. Into these territories came a man who had the courage to keep the peace. With his two guns blazing, cities like Wichita, Dodge City, and Ellsworth soon returned to law and order. And now, with frontier recognition as the greatest gun-fighting marshal in the West, he came to one of the toughest spots on earth, the land of the bad men. Tombstone, Arizona. This man was United States Marshal Wyatt Earp. Now look here, Earp. We don't need you here in Tombstone. Matter of fact, we don't want you here. We, Sheriff Bean? Who's we? The people who run Tombstone. You mean the riffraff? People like old man Clanton and his son Ike and the rest of his horse thieves and outlaws? You know, they're honest folks here who don't like the way the town is run. No one's complaining to me, and I don't see that it's any of your care. People who organized and called themselves the Citizen Safety Committee don't agree with you. They invited me here to Tombstone to do a little cleaning up. And I kind of figure I'll oblige them. Well, give me a list of that committee. Uh, I want to meet with them. That's exactly what they're afraid of. They don't trust you, Sheriff. That's why they called on me. Earp, I'm sheriff of this town, duly elected by the people. I'll run this town the way I see fit. And you or any committee won't tell me how. You neglected to mention that the ballot boxes were stuffed by old man Clanton and his boys. And they counted the votes. I aim to see that honest people lose their fear of a gun, have the freedom of expression, and live their lives the way they want to live them. And you're not going to stop me, Sheriff. For a guy who's friends with a cold-blooded killer like Doc Holliday, you sure are a preaching man. Doc Holliday's no angel, but I never knew him to shoot a man in the back. Erp, I heard a rumor in town that old man Clanton and his boys plan on getting you on sight. As Sheriff of Cochise County, it's my duty to protect you. I'm escorting you... Doc Holliday and your brother Morgan safely out of town. If I were you, I'd start packing fast. I don't want to keep old man Clanton waiting. It would be downright rude. Where can I find him? Help me, Sheriff. Help. It's old man Clanton and his boys. I guess you had it coming or they wouldn't be after you. You gotta stop him. You gotta help me. I'm entitled to the protection of the law. Get out, Johnny. You got no business in here. I think maybe he has. I don't care what he did. I arrested you once in Wichita, didn't I, Johnny? Yeah. You got a fair trial, Sheriff, and right now I say he's going to get another one. Before a judge, I'm going out. Better not, Herb. Old man Clanton's out there. Boys, boys, don't make any fool play here. That little tin horn isn't worth it. That's her. That's why, Herb. Get him. Come on, 
Guess you sure can, but I'll take eight or ten of you along. There's 18 bucks shot in my gun, and the wads are slit. One step, and I'll begin with old man Clanton. Step aside, Earp. We have a little settling to do inside that door. You also threaten to get me on sight. I'm waiting for you anytime, any place. But right now, I'm going to see the justice is done. You're not taking Johnny, and you're not going to be the judge, Clanton. And don't move a step. I meant what I said. I don't like you, Earp. The world's too small for the both of us. Maybe you're right. We'll see about it. Right now, you're going to call off your voice. I don't take any guff from you. That's our fight. We'll settle it in time. Now, I'm going back in. I'm turning my back on you. You're too yellow to shoot, Clanton. I've dealt with your kind before. Huh? Yes, Clanton? Be out of town before the sun sets. Take charge. He's dead, Sheriff. And so are the two guards. I saw it. I can identify the killer. I, I chased him, but I couldn't catch him. Who was it? Well, there were two of them. The only one I recognized was Doc Holliday. You're a Clanton, aren't you, Ike? Yes. Your father's old man, Clanton. That's right. Well, I don't believe you. Doc Holliday's out somewhere with my brother Morgan. I believe Ike. He's an eyewitness. And he said Doc was with another man. That could be your brother. Why not? Except these two guards were shot in the back. That's not one of Doc's habits. There's no law that says I have to believe you. I'm arresting Doc and charging him with murder. That is, if he ever gets to trial. And how do I know, Earp, that you're not part of this hold-up deal? If you think so, Sheriff, just try arresting me. That'll keep. I'm going out to get Doc Holliday. I think it'd be better if I did it. It'd be a lot safer for your hide. Yeah, sure. If I, uh, maybe you better do like he says. I'll take you where the coach was held up. You can trail him from there. Let's get going, Ike. I was coming east uh, around this bend when I heard a shoot. Over there are the trail marks. Looks like Holiday headed that way. I thought you said you chased him. How come you only think he headed that way? Are you trying to call me a liar? Not trying. Calling. And when I prove it, you're going to eat the sand right off this desert. I don't like what you're saying. I don't like you. Maybe before I'm through with you, sand will be too good for you. Reach up. Yeah, come on, get out there. You see what I mean? Get off your horse. Take his guns, Ike. There's nothing I'd like better. <clears throat> Start eating sand. Sure. Get away from him, Ike. Herp, I told you to get out of town. You didn't listen. You figured to ambush me, Clanton. When do you want me to turn my back? I'm in no hurry. It wasn't hard to tell who killed the Wells Fargo boys. They got it in the back. At least, Clanton, they didn't have to look at your ugly face. Shooting's too good for Big Mouth. Ike. You talk too much for a fighting man. Shut up! Let's see. There's five of you here now. How are you going to split the Wells Fargo money? I'll do the dividing, Herp. You better double check it, boys. Clanton's a hog. You'll pay off short. Start walking, Herp. You're going to get it at the count of five. One. Two. Three. No. Drop the guns, boys. Doc Holliday. We don't have a thing to worry about, Wyatt. The Clantons are too ignorant to count to five. Your brother Morgan's on the other side, just in case anyone has any ideas about starting trouble. How'd you know I was here, Doc? I heard about it in town. Ike, you said I shot men in the back. I don't hold still for that. Now just give me a gun. Sure. Here's my gun. I'll use my fist. Quit that, Doc. Ike, you and your father and the rest of the scum are going back to town. And Ike, you're going to do some talking. You're going to tell me in front of Sheriff B and how the Wells Fargo boys were murdered and who did it. You witnessed Ike Clanton's confession, Sheriff. I'd like you to affix your signature right below his. That'll make it legal. I'm not signing anything. 
Can't say that I blame you. Wouldn't sound good if Ike opened up on you. Ike's got nothing on me. Neither of you. I didn't say I had. Well, Ike will get his chance to repeat his story in court, and so will his old man. Come on, we'll go over to the jail and pay them our respects. I'm afraid you're going to be very disappointed. Well, what do you mean? The Clantons and the other boys broke jail. And they're waiting for you down in the OK Corral. They're laying to kill you. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to throw them back into the calaboose. Dead or alive. <laughs> I'm coming along with you, Wyatt. Sure, Morgan. Where are you going, Wyatt? Down to the OK Corral to make a fight, Doc. About time. I'll go along. Now, this is our fight. There's no call for you to mix in. It's a fine thing to say to me. I didn't figure you'd go without me. I know, Doc. But this will be a tough one. Tough ones are the kind I like. All right, you asked for it. A uh, corral's up ahead. How do we go in? Fan out. We're too good a target together. Yeah. Know something, why? Yes, Morgan. All my life, I've wondered, when you're about to die, do you see a vision of heaven? This is no time to be thinking of heaven. I wouldn't be worrying about it, Morgan, until that time comes. Now, fan out. It's all right, boys. Everything's all right, wife. I've disarmed them. Well, thanks for the favor, Sheriff. Morgan, Doc. Spread out more. Clanton, Ike, the rest of you, you men are under arrest. Throw up your hands. Come and get us. If that's the way you want it, I'm coming in. I'm waiting. So am I, Eric. I'll take you too, Ike. Look out, Wyatt, they're on. Careful, Morgan, we're getting it from all sides. Where are you, Doc? Right here. Still in one piece. Yep, I'm still waiting for you. No! You still haven't got me, Earp. Get out where I can get a beat on you. No! Wyatt, Ike's running away. He's getting out. Get him, Wyatt. You can't, Morgan. He threw his gun away. I can't shoot an unarmed man. The old man, Wyatt, is behind Well, I guess that's it. Why'd you let Ike get away? It only means he'll run for some more of their boys and start some more trouble. I'm sorry, but that's the way it had to be. Wyatt, I'm arresting you. For what? For murder. You, Ben? Arrest me? You tried your best to get us killed. If anyone ought to be arrested for murder, it's you. You won't take me in, Sheriff, but I'll be where any respectable person can arrest me any time he wants to. But don't you or any of your cheap errand boys try it. On the day after the fight at the O.K. Corral, the bodies of old man Clanton and his boys were dressed in the finest of store clothes, placed in ornate caskets, and put on public view. Above the bodies was displayed a huge placard which read, Murdered in the Streets of Tombstone by Wyatt Earp. Meantime, Wyatt Earp surrendered to a federal judge on a charge of murder. And the day of his trial brought forth milling crowds of the outlaw faction, determined to take the law into their own hands should the judge render a verdict in favor of Wyatt Earp. I, Clanton, swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Your Honor, Wyatt Earp murdered my father in cold blood. My father was unarmed when he was attacked and couldn't defend himself, and so was I. I couldn't protect them. All right, I'll shut her down like the dirty dog he is. <laughs> Sheriff Bean, swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. I warned Wyatt Earp, Your Honor, that the boys in the OK Corral were unarmed. Earp told me to forget what I'd see. He'd make it up to me later. He explained he had a personal grudge against old man Clanton and planning getting him where there was no chance he'd get hurt himself. All I can say is that I witnessed the coldest, blooded, and most unwarranted killing I've ever seen in my life. Wyatt Earp, swear to 
tell the truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. I won't refute the testimony of Sheriff Vian or Ike Clanton. I believe their lies speak for themselves. What's more important to me is that men of the stripe of Sheriff Vian and Ike Clanton can remain free to accuse any innocent man of a crime. Swear to it and hope and pray that they can make it stick. I sincerely wish that Sheriff Bean had been alongside his friends who shot it out with us in the O.K. Corral. If he had been, Tombstone would now be a decent place to live in. I cannot resist the conclusion that the defendant, Wyatt Earp, was fully justified in committing these homicides. It is the decision of this court that Wyatt Earp is not guilty and the charge against him is dismissed. For you. What's the excitement, Doc? Ike Clanton's brought in Indian Charlie, John Ringo, and Hank Swilling. You couldn't have picked a finer crew of bushwhackers. Yeah, but they're here in town looking for you. Won't take them along to find me. Where's Morgan? Across the street, shooting pool. Come on, we'll get him, and then we'll get ready for Ike and his friends. Better keep in the shadows. No sense making targets of ourselves. Doc, I know you're my friend. And I'm beginning to think you have brains. Let's make a run for it. <laughs> Time you to bed, isn't it? You trying to baby me? Of course not. You're still pretty weak from that wound, and you look tired. Oh, it's too early to go home. Nothing much doing here. Come on, Doc, and you and I go home and do a little talking. No reason why we can't talk here. What's the matter, Wyatt? Don't you think I know about the gang I Clanton brought to town? You know, I'm a grown-up man now. Come on, Morgan. It's time for bed. Wyatt, we herbs weren't reared to run away from nobody. No, were we reared to die unnecessarily. Make this your last shot, boy. I'm going to show you the fanciest shot you've ever seen. I'm going to play a three-ball combination which will ease the five-ball gently into the side pocket. <laughs> I'm hit. Did, did they get you, Wyatt? Uh, are you all right? I'm fine, boy. Just take it easy now. Is that better? My legs straight. They are straight, Morgan. Must be my back's broken. Looks like I've run out my string, Wyatt. It won't... won't belong now, will it? Don't talk that way, Morgan. You'll be on your feet in no time. Sure. We... We know who did it, don't we? And we'll get them, you and I. You'll give the orders. Morgan, I'll follow you anywhere. Then... Then down... Close to me. Sure, boy. Sure. Ever since I was a kid, I always asked you... When you're about to die, do you see a vision of heaven? Why did I, I... I don't see a thing. Morgan. Morgan. So long, Why? Take care of yourself. There's nothing more you can do for him, Wyatt. All my life, Doc, I've respected the law. He'd be alive right now if I hadn't. That bullet was meant for me, not for him. It's a pretty high price to ask a man to pay for trying to shoot square. I know who killed Morgan, and I'm going after him. I hope they'll be fools enough to resist the rest. Reach, Ringo. One for Morgan. Run 
under arrest, Willie. Watch it, Wyatt. He's going for his gun. Two for Morgan. Hello, Ike. Uh, what do you want? Bert? You. Huh? I figured I'd find you here in the sheriff's office. I'm arresting you, Ike, for ambushing and killing my brother. Now, I had nothing to do with it. I, I, I can prove it. Well, you're going to get the swear for you, Sheriff Bean. No. All right, I'm your prisoner, Rip. I'm leaving with you any time you're ready. What makes you so agreeable, Ike? Well, my lawyers are <laughs> waiting outside. You didn't think you'd outsmart me, did you? I could shoot you right in your tracks, couldn't I, Ike? You wouldn't do that, would you? Your law buys. There's, there's no law that says you can't shoot a skunk. You killed my brother, remember? I wouldn't worry too much about that lawyer of yours. Doc Holliday took him for a little walk before I came in. Come on, get going. I'm not going anywhere with you. If I had a gun with me, you'd never leave this room. That can be fixed. When I say one, you can make your fight. I won't go for my gun until I've counted three. Here's your gun, Ike. One, two, three. Three for Morgan. What's going on in here? All right. Don't try arresting me for murder again, Sheriff. I warn you. Don't worry, I won't. I don't feel sorry, Pike Clanton. I don't expect you would. You're a greedy man. First you wanted power. The Clantons gave you that when they made you sheriff. Then you wanted riches. Clantons gave you that when they cut you in on the Wells Fargo holdup. But that wasn't good enough for you. Part of the money wasn't enough. Now that Ike's dead, it's all yours. You're a rich man. $80,000 worth. But you'll never enjoy it. We're talking mighty big. That $80,000, Sheriff, is in your safe. That's a lie. Care to open it? What's in my safe is my own business. I'll describe what's inside. There are two bundles. One marked with your name, the other with Ike Clanton's. Each has $40,000 in it. Doc Holliday opened your safe for me. Legally, of course. I had a court order. And $200 a month pay isn't a lot of money, is it, Herb? Not exactly. You can take the bundle marked Ike Clanton. $40,000 isn't a lot of money. You think you can buy back the life of my brother Morgan and all the people in this town that have died because of you? No, Bean, you're going to pay. But first you're going to get what you don't deserve. A fair trial. I'm glad for you, Doc. I'm glad that you're staying on here in Tombstone. Well, I'm getting tired of kicking around, Wyatt. Man needs roots, a place he can call home. How about you? Me? Nothing I'd like better, but not just yet. I'm going west, California. You know, folks around here are mighty grateful for all you've done. The whole town's yours, we ask. Sounds mighty inviting, but I can't stay. You know, a man's got a right to make up his own mind. Someday I'll be back, Doc. Someday when it won't be necessary to keep the peace with a gun. And folks will get together and talk their troubles out instead of shooting them out. The West is still young. I guess it's having growing pains. Give it time. Give it time and it'll get there. Men like you around, it has a mighty good chance. So long, Doc. I'll be seeing you. So long, Wyatt. Wyatt. Yes, Doc. Wyatt. Take care of yourself. A stirring story and a great performance. Thank you, Mr. Conti. You know, the story of a man like Wyatt Earp is a living inspiration to all of us who live in America today and cherish the highest of its traditions. I agree with you, Mr. Hilton. And I'd like to add how much I feel it an honor to have been here on the Hallmark Playhouse. Traditions are wonderful things. 
They can serve as both inspiration and guidance in so many of the daily things we do. But of course, you here at Hallmark know that, since you express it so excellently in your Hallmark cards. You too have your traditions, and fine ones they are. Thank you, Mr. Conte, for your tribute. We appreciate it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite you to join us next week when we present a dramatization of Irving Stone's fine story, Immortal Wife, starring that famous Hollywood actress, Loretta Young, whose present reign as an Academy Award winner will give way in a few hours to some other distinguished actress, who we don't know, but Miss Young is probably just as excited about it as we are. And in following weeks, we will present Betty Smith's well-known story, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, starring that wonderful little girl, Margaret O'Brien, and Zoe Yakin's Morning Glory, starring one of Hollywood's youngest and brightest stars, Elizabeth Taylor. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Lee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our story tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Thank you.